Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to go a little bit into detail about uh, how this model works and kind of how you can figure out how to how to modify this model uh, to get it to work uh, for the homework. Now I, I could sit here for for hours on end walking through the code and explaining every little detail, but the fact of the matter is you'll probably learn the model best by by working with the code yourself by trying to change how the model works, and most likely breaking the model, but hopefully learning about how the model works in the process. So that's what I'm going to do in this video here, is just kind of give you an idea of, of okay, how do I even start probing one of these models to start figuring out how, do I, how does it work and how can I change it to do what I want it to do. Um, so if we scroll down to the code here, for this homework, uh, this, is, this section here, that I'm going to highlight is probably uh, where you're going to be making um, most of the code changes at least uh, to the model itself uh, although you'll also have to modify um, a part at the end uh, of the script so it actually saves data from the model but I'll go over that in a separate video. Specifically um, the things that you'll be you'll be playing around with in this model is this num patches and patch size variables. Um, these are the ones that change the size of the food and how much food there is there in the environment and that's what's hypothesized to play a role in uh, whether or not this area restricted search behavior evolves. So first off let's just go ahead and take a look at how uh, one of these variables affects the model um, so probably the simplest way to do that uh, is just to pick one of them. So let's go ahead and pick this num patches, and I'm going to do a search here for num patches. Oops, helps if you spell the variable correctly. Um, so there's the declaration of the variable, and then it looks like if we go through the code, yep, this is pretty much the only spot where num patches is actually used. So if we change um, the value of num patches, uh, the only thing it's going to change in the model is this for loop right here. And it looks like all this for loop is, is doing is for however many times uh, num patches is specified, so right now it's 20, so it's going to go through this for loop 20 times, and it looks like it's going to pick a random x and a random y uh, within the world, and then it's going to store that into a list. And this kind of makes sense for a variable called num patches, right? Because it's it's specifying the number of food patches that should be in the world. Uh, so this is um, one way to choose random places for food to be there. So if we wanted to see how this how this variable actually affects the model itself, uh, let's go ahead and execute all the code. So we need to run all of these cells in order. Okay, and then now the model's running, and we currently have it set to a patch size of 20. So if we look at the result there, sure enough, we see uh, about 20 patches in the world um, uh, of food that, that the forager can, can go after. If we change num patches to, let's say, 50 and run everything again, sure enough, we'll see that there are many more food patches. Uh, in, in this forager's world. So it's it's fairly straightforward what this num patches variable is doing um, and and this is sort of how you can tease apart the model. You can do similar things for patch size. You can search for patch size in the code and and look at just the bit of code that deals with that variable and then you can do that with the rest of these variables so world width and world height and you can see how, the, how these variables shape uh, the model and shape the, in, the simulation environment um, that we're watching this behavior uh, evolve in. For the last bit of this video I've had a few people asking me whether it's possible to run IPython notebook uh, in a screen kind of sense where you can run it on the EC2 node 
and shut your computer down and then come back to it, say, 30 minutes or an hour later. Unfortunately, it's not possible to do that with IPython Notebook, but you can save this, mo this model as a simple Python script, um, which you can then run on the command line and, and uh, run it with screen from there. So I'll, I'm gonna, I'll show you for the rest of this video how you can actually accomplish that. So it's really simple in IPython Notebook. You just go up to this file here, and then you choose Download As, and then you say Python. And so this will, this will download it into a Python script. And for me, it goes straight to my Downloads folder. Um, uh, it may go somewhere different for you, but it'll probably go into some folder that related to downloads. If you open up the file, you'll see that it basically transferred everything from the notebook into a Python file. So all that text at the beginning is just a bunch of comments. And then we have the actual code here. So we have the import statements and all the variables, yada, yada, yada. Um, and so there's only, and so there's a few things that you'll have to change here um, for it to actually work as, uh, as a Python script on the command line. The first thing you'll want to change in this file is, is you'll want to comment out this fitness evaluation function call um, that's right under the ge if generation mod visualization display frequency. Um, and that's because this is, this is the code that actually displays the IPython blocks grid world there. And on the command line, you don't want that call to happen uh, because you can't actually do that kind of visualization on the command line. The other bit of code you want to take out is this PyLab magic call here, which is just specific to uh, uh, IPython Notebook. And so uh, that's, that's just telling IPython Notebook that you actually want to do plotting right there in the notebook. Well, again, you can't do visualization on the command line, so you can actually just take out this entire bit of code here um, that does all the figures and remove that entirely. So once you've saved that file, you should be able to go to wherever that, the file is located on your command line, or perhaps you'll have to upload it to your EC2 node. Um, that's definitely a possibility. Then you should just be able to run it like this by saying Python and then provide the name of the file, .py, and then now um, it'll actually run, this, run the simulation uh, without generating any graphics um, and, and collect all the data for you. Now, of course, if you're going to run it like this, you'll also want to modify it so it saves all the data from the run at the end. Otherwise, you're going to get nothing out of this. Uh, so, so go ahead and check out the other video where I talk about how to actually save data into a text file after you've collected all the data from a run.